Welcome to the Art Channel. And in this film, we're visiting the Alex Katz exhibition at the Serpentine Gallery in Kensington Gardens. The exhibition entitled Quick Light is a combination of portraits and urban uh, landscapes the painter has made over a number of decades. This painting is called Untitled Cityscape 4 and it's part of a series of kind of urban landscapes. This one, I think, done in New York. It's quite an extraordinary, quirky painting, I think, for cats. It's a very odd angle. I feel as if I'm on a train passing at speed. This building in silhouette, very economical, the, uh, the television aerial, and really all of his passion in the painting is about that sky, that dramatic, uh, wonderful, fluid sky. But it's not a sublime romantic painting of the early 19th century like those cloud studies by John no. Constable, is it? It's very painterly. You get this arc and sweep of sort of white paint, wet on wet with the grey. Mm. It draws your eye to the sort of beam of light across the canvas. And then below, you get this very contrasting hard edge to the top of this building that's very anonymous except for the beam of sort of um, yellow light showing occupation of the room mm. below on the lower right. I think this painting really shows Katz as a, as a really good technician. Mm. When you look at the way he's laid on the paint uh, for that sky, it's, it's wonderful. It seems so easy and actually it says a lot. Um, and I like this idea of being in the moment, the present tense. It's just something you see for a moment, very ordinary, very mundane, but he asks you just to stop and look. Well, it's a very sort of striking, bold image, but it also asks us to consider the experience of being in the city, of how we move through urban space, what it is our eye is drawn to. And here he's returning us to nature, as it were, away from the built environment. Um, but there's a beautiful echo of the yellow in the window in the cloud itself. It's sort of tying the painting together. This is a painting called Ada, made in 2015. Ada is Katz's wife and has been for over, over 50 years. He's made, I think, in excess of 200 paintings of this person. And he really considers uh, her his muse. He talks about her being elegant and beautiful and having composure and poise uh, and is, is really drawn back again and again to this person. Um, I think it's a very, very strong painting. I'm really kind of drawn to this painting. And it's part of this series, Big Heads. Um, it started way, way back in the 50s. Kat spent a lot of time in, in movie houses, as you know, mm. looking at uh, American cinema, not really worrying about what the film was, but very fascinated by the drama of film and the fact that your protagonist can be up to the viewer or up to the camera. Well, it's so striking visually, isn't it? But it reminds me of the visual language of advertising mm. and even billboards, that enormous scale, um, the way in which you are artificially given that proximity mm. and access to the physical features of an individual. But Katz has this extraordinary, very distinctive way of almost caricaturing, yeah. um, summing up um, very simply to the point that even the proportions in the face are slightly exaggerated. But it's not satirical. It's tremendously affectionate and admiring. And he's able to instill in us a sense of awe almost mm. looking at this woman, even though, of course, she is a stranger. Mm. I think you're right, he's able to um, almost share his relationship with her. It's a very, it's a huge painting. The, the, uh, the face is much bigger than life, but in a way it's quite an intimate painting. And he obviously takes things from pop art, this, this you know, um, flat, fluid surface, but they are in no way pop art paintings. No, it doesn't have that kind of uh, wit or wryness of pop art, the irony, mm. because of course it's so intimate to mm. him. But of course, at the same time, it's very characteristic of his whole series mm. of heads, whereby he's exploring a kind of uh, set of codes about how we make images mm. or represent the body. And famously, he placed 15 large faces around, wrapped them around a building in Times Square mm. for five years. Mm. So he's thinking about distance and physical closeness to a painting. And as you said, this, the influence of cinema, how useful 
we're so familiar to mm. the idea of the magnified head looming mm. at us, uh, feeling very kind of natural mm. and real at the same time. This painting is titled 4pm, it's made in 2014. It was painted in Maine where he has a studio, so he's very familiar with this landscape. And we're looking here at a thicket of branches um, that leads the eye through to a cabin across what appears to be a lake. And there's a tremendous kind of energy in the brushwork. There's a sense of movement and flow. It reminds me actually of Cezanne, that vibration in the landscape. But then in the, 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 the distance, the composition is much more still mm. and calm and ordered. So there's this sort of tension within the painting between the foreground and the distance. I think unlike some of the, the portraits, the big heads, uh, which are very much about somebody being very close to the viewer. This gives you a tremendous sense of depth, doesn't it? You look across that water, you are there. It is 4pm. He wants to paint, as he puts it, the present tense. So it's very important that it's that particular light, place, time, season. And he, uh, you're right, this kind of agitated brushwork in the tree is, is very clever because it really makes you feel as if you're there, you're standing there, looking across this lake. And these branches are very carefully placed. The diagonals, the two diagonals and the horizontal, really make your eye move around this painting. I think Alex Katz really teaches us to enjoy the surface of the painting. And you can clearly see that he loves the, the act of making a painting. And he says, you know, you have to be absolutely dedicated to it in terms of time and effort and learning, you know, learning from other artists. But what is actually taking place in this painting? Well, there's a kind of sort of bathos or almost anti-climax because it's very simple and reduced. There's an economy here that's very typical of all his paintings. Mm -hmm. But our eye is constantly drawn to that cabin. What is taking place in that hut? Why is it significant? But we can't see any actual drama or action around it. No, it's fantastic because actually there's nothing happening and so you are in the moment. You're mm. just in the present tense, aren't you? Yeah. And this economy, I think, is really important to him. He's um, always been interested in poetry. He's worked with poets. He admires poetry for its ability to get rid of anything unnecessary and he can do that in a painting. There's only on the surface of that canvas what you need uh, for us to know it's 4pm in Maine, in that particular place. So I think this is a really exciting show, um, largely focused on landscape painting um, in the city, but also in Maine, where he has a studio. But my respect for him has grown looking at his skillful technique and handling of paint, of surface, of color and light and of reflection. And they're quite mesmerizing mm. at times, but fundamentally I think the portraits are the most su su successful uh, aspect of his practice. I think I'd, ag I'd agree. I think they're very, very engaging. Those large heads kind of looming at the front of the canvas are, are really um, very extraordinary. The landscapes, I think, are interesting and much more abstract, and those kind of looser edges are a different part of his practice, but I would always be drawn back to the portraits. And I think it's interesting to see new generations of artists, and I think about people like Peter Dorig, Elizabeth mm. Payton, um, kind of picking up on Katz's economy. Thank you for watching this film on the Art Channel. If you've enjoyed the film, please give us a thumbs up, and you can also subscribe on the red button on the screen. You can also subscribe to our social media channels on Twitter and Instagram.